So nearly two weeks ago, there was a publicly reported vulnerability for KDE released on Twitter without any responsible disclosure to the developers, so somewhat of an irresponsible disclosure to release it to the world. Well, now that the issue has been fixed, it seems a good time to talk about it and see what has happened. So first reported on ZDNet, just viewing, not running, a malicious .desktop or .directory file inside Dolphin File Manager can run malicious code on a user's system. So it does require some social engineering to get someone to download the file, or it could be placed in some sort of torrent or Usenet file. Yeah, anyone could click on it from there, but hey, <laughs> some of those files can be completely untrusted. The bug was discovered by Dominic Zeropon Penner and impacts the KDE Frameworks package 5.60 and below. So effectively, all versions of the KDE desktop on any Linux operating system. I'll read about how the vulnerability works later on in the video because there's some better write-ups about it than what ZDNet have done. But let's go down to here. So the researcher did not notify the KDE team. So in an interview, Penner explained the motives of publishing the details in that he just wanted to drop a zero day before DEF CON conference. I do plan on reporting it, but the issue is more of a design flaw than an actual vulnerability, despite what it can do. So yes, a design flaw. To be honest, I was debating going into the code and making a change myself, considering KDE is open source. So ZDNet notified the KDE team and their response was, we would appreciate if people would contact security at KDE.org before releasing an exploit into the public, rather than the other way around, so that we can decide on a timeline together. Yeah, <laughs> that makes much more sense. You don't want to have to rush a fix. You need time to plan it, time to get it into the distributions. And all that can take quite a few days. And then the discoverer can take public credit for it. And that's how it should be. So a vulnerability in a computer program would be doing something like giving it an abnormal string and then getting an abnormal reaction back. So you could be putting in code that shouldn't be executed into, say, a text box and then finding the application actually executes it and does something to the system. But in this case, there was actually a design feature to actually allow code to be added into a .desktop file. So this was the original Twitter post, and there was even a video proof of concept. So there's a write-up. So at least KDE developers have now fixed a bug, and Dominic has agreed to uh, be more responsible for <laughs> disclosures in the future. So that's good. So there's the information on the KDE security page, even detailing how to email or even privately emailing any of the few people listed there with PGP keys given. So this is the vulnerability that has been fixed. So the syntax key dollar e shell command in .desktop files, .directory files, and configuration files was an intentional feature of kconfig to allow flexible configuration. This could however be abused by malicious people to make users install files and get code executed even without intentional action by the user. A file manager trying to find out the icon for a file or directory could end up executing code, or any application using kconfig could end up executing malicious code during its startup phase, for instance. After careful consideration, the entire feature of supporting shell commands in kconfig entries has been removed, because we couldn't find an actual use case for it. So an unintentional feature rather than a vulnerability. So that's pretty much a repeat of it on the mailing thread there, but says, thanks to Dominic Penner for finding and documenting this issue. We wish, however, that he would have contacted us before making the issue public. So there's a common vulnerabilities and exposure or CVE number allocated to this uh, vulnerability, you know, this uh, oversight of CVE 2019-14744. And the CVSS score, so that's kind of... Uh, the severity of it, so it's been given a severity of high, but the actual score out of 10 is 7.9. I was trying to find more of an official write-up on this, but there isn't. This is kind of about the best pages I can find here. So it's not excessively high, but it was probably given that because it was a publicly disclosed vulnerability and is exploitable over the internet. Well, that you could be downloading any file from a website and it could have a malicious .desktop file in it. Then by viewing it in something like Dolphin, code would be executed, and it would be executed without your control. But now fixes have been released, so once you've updated your system, 
this will no longer be an issue. Debian have released fixes for their old stable, the current stable, and SID. Kubuntu seem to be working on fixes for the stable release of uh, their packages, but if you do have the backports repository enabled, then you'll get the fixes straight away. There's a brief analysis which has been carried out into this issue by a Chinese company, and it actually seems to be a really good write-up. Quite surprising, really. I was having a good look around for any pages with that uh, CV number, and this was yeah the best I came across. So with the proof of concept, you create a file named payload.desktop, write a payload into it, so that's literally just going to echo out zero and create a new file. But opening the file manager after saving, we'll find that a payload has been executed. So yeah, although it's a benign command there, that uh, could have been any other bash command and could have done something more lethal. I meant to mention that IFS is the bash internal field separator. I'm not entirely sure what they're doing there, but it's just literally going to echo out zero. And yeah, it does. And there's a similar thing with directory. Uh, it's just going on a bit more about the proof of concept. Yeah. The standard usage of .desktop and .directory files in Linux should be using an XDG desktop entry specification, which should normally contain the type and name key, and it can optionally define the appearance of the application menu. So it shouldn't be anything too complicated, but the KDE, but KDE have gone a bit further with their implementation and allowed further commands to be executed. So their conclusion. Personally, I think this vulnerability represents something out of itself. Firstly, it's not clear what were the developers thinking when they were developing KDE, perhaps to make the framework more flexible, but it is only used to get the value of user variable according to the document. So yeah, the user would literally be the user's username. I found that flexibility and security are sometimes conflicting to each other. Dominic Penner directly released this vulnerability without notifying the official, without going through the official release mechanisms, which is quite controversial. Personally, I find it is better to send the vulnerabilities to developers to get it patched before releasing it. Many people have supported Penner on Twitter, and he explained he was just doing this because he wanted to submit a zero day vulnerability before DEF CON started. So that is pretty much it. I'll leave a link to all these articles in the video description because there is quite a bit more than I wanted to discuss in this video, but covers it really. That it was an irresponsible disclosure, but it wasn't really a vulnerability, but more of a feature that allowed a little bit too much to happen. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.